You know, my friends, often, uh, as a matter of fact, probably almost every evening when I get home off, uh, off the road, I can't just kind of go to sleep, even though you'd think with being on the road and sitting in a relaxed position, I would be relaxed enough, but I kind of have to unwind because often being on the road is much more mentally taxing than physically. The lifting I do is, is the physical part of the job. And so to, to unwind, I'll often, you know, I like to read, and, and I do a certain amount of reading and, and Bible study every night, but I like to visit uh, message boards and chat rooms, and uh, usually I kind of just sit there and listen, and or, or I guess read would be the proper term. It, it, it seems like I'm listening because it's a conversation or conversations. And one of the things, uh, maybe perhaps the main thing I see on, on there is this, this continued protestation, I guess, of, of isolation and aloneness and, and loneliness. And, and it seems to be weighing on people. And I want to reach out in some way and, and tell them that they're looking at it from the wrong perspective. It's, it's not... Mm, boy, I'm trying to struggle with the words that I want to get out. It's not that they have been cast out. It's not that they have been pushed aside. If they are followers of the risen Lord, my friends, they have been called out. They have been chosen. It is their very faith. In conflict with the flesh we live upon that causes this sense of loneliness within us. You see, as a believer, even if we were surrounded by a vast crowd of people at all time. The cross we carry is ours alone. And the carrying of it marks us out clearly as one set apart. And we become separated from those around us by the work of the Spirit of God that makes people uncomfortable in our presence, in the pain of loneliness that most of us feel from time to time arises from the conflict of this spiritual movement going on within us and the natural nature of our physical bodies. God made us for each other. The desire for human companionship is completely natural, right and normal. The loneliness of the believer the Lamb results from his walk with God in an ungodly world, my friends. And this walk, as we all know, will often take us away from the fellowship of friends and family. It will separate us. It will separate us, certainly, from most of the churchianity Christians, as well as from the common unregenerate world. Our God-given instincts cry out for companionship with others. Others who can understand our longings with this spiritual growth beginning and separating us out. Yet because, because of our, our newborn spirituality, our growth in the Lord, and I'm, I'm saying this very clumsily, I'm trying to focus in, it's, it's this very absorption into the things of Christ that separates us out, because most of our friends that we may have had before do not know or understand this experience that we have had, and it forces us, forces us out, my friends. The man who has passed into the inner presence of God in a living, vital experience will not find many, if any at all, who understand him and what is going on. 
and true fellowship of the Spirit will be hard if almost if almost impossible to find. But we should not expect things any different. After all, my friends, we are strangers and pilgrims here on earth, and the journey we take is truly not on our feet, but in our heart. Here we walk with God in the garden of our own soul, and who but God can truly walk with us there? We have become of another spirit from the multitudes of men that tread the surface of our planet. We have seen, we have felt, we have heard those things which they have only known in echoes and shadows. And because of this, they look at us differently. They fear us, they hate us and they tend to isolate us even if we do not isolate ourselves and of course in many ways they're right the spirit-filled believer is something of an oddity in our decadent hedonistic society we live we live not for ourselves but to promote the interests of another we seek no honors no glory no fortunes only to raise the name of our risen lord Our joy is to see our Lord promoted. And as we search, we find few, few people we want to run into that after they've spoken with us for a minute or two and they begin to know us. <laughs> the longings within us begin to rise up when we start to speak about the living God and his abundant love and these things which are the subjects of the most importance to us and you can see it in their eyes people begin to turn us off suddenly they have a phone call or they have to go to the bathroom or they have to walk away So many times because of this, we tend to become silent and meditative, like the flower on the wall. And because we don't partake of their noisy entertainments, their constant bickerings, small talk and gossips, they look at us as being self-righteous, self-indulgent or even hateful. So we are avoided. We are avoided and pushed aside. And the gulf between us and the society in which we live grows and seems to become wider. Yet, my friends, if you look at it, it is this very rejection and the loneliness that it brings that throws us back on God. As the word says, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Our inability to find any real, true human companionship drives us to seek in God what we cannot find anywhere else. And we learn in inner solitude what we could not have learned in the crowd. That our living Lord is for us all in all. That he has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. redemption. <laughs> it's hard to talk in the morning sometimes. <laughs> and that in him and in him alone, my friends, we have and possess all of life's beauty and fullness. If you are one of these individuals and to tell you the truth, from, I don't know who is not, from at least from time to time, who feel alone, lonely, having come out of the harlot church system, being forced out of the world, and having not found fellowship with any other. Listen, my friends, and hear what the Lord is saying to his people. You have not been rejected, my beloved. Quite the contrary, you have been called out 
It is I who am setting you apart and sanctifying you with my presence, preparing you for me, that when I come, I will have a house, pure and undefiled, in which to dwell. For I would dwell amongst my people and within my people. I have chosen you. I have chosen you to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to be my people, kings and priests unto me, to worship me, to be a people who live for the light of my glory. I have chosen you and set you aside for this very purpose, that I might have a people of my own among whom and in whom I might show forth my glory. Enter into my presence, my beloved. Come before me with singing, rejoicing, and songs of praise. I delight in you. I delight in my holy ones. I rejoice in my righteous ones. You are my children, my family, my household. And I am the all-sufficient one and the father of you all. It is I who have called you out and I have separated you because I desire that you worship me only in spirit and in truth. And out of that worship will come a relationship, a relationship between us, an abiding, living, vibrant relationship. I and you, you and me, we will be one. This is the intimacy, my friends, my beloved, he would have with you. He is calling you into a new relationship, a higher union, a higher union altogether. Oh, my friends, think of it not as isolation. Enjoy your separation unto him who is your Lord and your bridegroom. And do not struggle for companionship fellowship or any other ship look only to our living Lord who has called you unto him and into him don't look for anything to be like you used to know it no as we walk in him fellowship with him grow in him a new life my friends all together is on the horizon and is coming. Be content in him and with him. When we come to that place in our hearts that we know and have learned that he alone is our sufficiency, then, my friends, he will give to us freely as he chooses. All I want is to indwell my people, says our risen Savior and to be your dwelling place. I would be your habitation. I want to love you, nurture you, strengthen you, and bring you new and complete into my holiness. I want to delight in you, rejoice in you, dance and dine with you, and you with me. You see, my friends, there is a vast, vast difference between aloneness, aloneness, and loneliness. To be alone with God is a wonderful, wonderful, blessed thing. It is being alone without God that leads to loneliness, emptiness, and despair. Listen to his words and his call to you once again, my friends, and know that in him in him you are never, never alone. In my presence is fullness of joy. How much of my presence do you want, my beloved? Thirty, sixty, a hundredfold. It is your choice. I invite you to come into the fullness of me, to tabernacle with me. Come drink of the cup I have prepared for you be raised into new life and ascend upon high. Sit in the heavenlies with me, for that is your destiny, my children, to be with me and I with you. 
let me take you by the hand and lead you through the outer courts, onward to the holy place, and ultimately into the holy of holies. Let me be your glory. Let me fill you with my glory. My children, do you hear the trumpet sounding in your heart, calling deep unto deep? It is me calling unto you. But Lord, you say, I am afraid. I have never passed this way before. I say to you, trust in me. Fix your eyes upon me. Take my hand and let me take you from glory to glory, faith to faith, deep unto deep, into the fullness of me. And my friends, my beloved friends, in his fullness, I can testify from my own life. There is no room for loneliness. He is, he is absolutely that perfect cure. Trust in him, my friends. Walk with him, speak with him, Understand that you have not been rejected. You have not been cast out. You have not been thrown away. You have not been deemed not good enough. Quite the contrary, my friends. Your isolation is evidence of your being chosen. It is the witness of your being called out. Called out unto him the Savior who gave all unto you there's a a kind of let's see here I lost it there for a minute I was looking for there we are the words of a man I, I read every now and then in, in devotionals and, and stuff he lived a couple hundred years ago and I'll close tonight with, uh, or this morning, <laughs> with a poem that he wrote, uh, oh, about 180 years ago. Christ's love touching your hard heart will dissolve it. Christ's love touching your cold heart will warm it. Christ's love touching your sinful heart will purify it. Christ's love touching your sorrowful heart will soothe it. Christ's love touching your lonely heart will draw it into his. Only first, bring your heart to Christ's love. I guess that's kind of what I've been trying to say for the whole 30 minutes or 10, 20 minutes, however long we've been talking. Bring your loneliness, your insecurity, your fear of aloneness, your frustrations. Bring them to Him. And here you will find the truth. As I have said, you are set apart because you are His. So in turn, my friends, life becomes whole again only as we walk in Him. Amen. I thank you, Father. As always, sometimes it's hard to break away from from what I want to say to, to close off, but uh, otherwise I begin to ramble and I, I begin to make less and less sense <laughs> if I ever make any to begin with. Before I go, I want to mention once again about the Bibles that I have. If there are needs, please contact me. I do have uh, oh, about three or four dozen now, and perhaps I can get some more. So let me know. Write to me. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable with this here. Let's see. 
Oh, I got to reach up and read the address. I was getting too comfortable in the chair when I was talking. That's probably why I was talking so slowly. The address, if you need, is Attention Kunita, CFC 5327 West Point Plaza, Box 138, Columbus, Ohio, 43228. My friends, if you have any needs, anything at all, prayer requests, healing, anything at all, write to me. I read them all, and I will respond as I can. As always, my friends, go in the strength and the power of our living God, that you may always know that you are His, you are loved, and you are important. Good night, my friends.